Good morning guys, welcome back to the final episode of the hydroponic versus aquaponic trial. It's been four weeks that we've been running this intensive side-by-side -side comparison uh, and it's just been an eye-opening experience really watching these two systems go head to head. Uh, so today we're going to be wrapping it up. We're going to be actually looking at what worked, what didn't work and ultimately which one one but before we get there let's have a quick update on this system and see what's changed in the last four weeks all right so let's start here with our wicking bed as you can see here in my wicking bed this is basically growing in that soil type mix with a water reservoir underneath our chili plants have gone absolutely berserk we've got our coriander our parsley and of course one of my absolute favorites look at how many of this tamarillo have now grown in a couple of weeks those are going to be ready to eat uh, our granadilla plant i'm going to show you some of the the fruits that are on that plant coming through also very very exciting it's our first granadilla in aquaponic systems uh, if we move on to my flood and drain media beds over here uh, as we mentioned before here we are growing in the stone have a look at these cucumbers guys it's been four weeks and you can see in the comparison between then and now these cucumbers are ready to be harvested it is so exciting to to see that sort of growth in such a short time frame uh, all of our lettuces here and our celery are ready our spring onion is also ready for harvesting but one of my favorite and this is the first time that we've actually done iceberg in aquaponics if you have a look here we've got beautiful heads forming on these icebergs so we're going to be sharing a few little tricks on to how to get that perfect head formation um, but uh, we've also got um, around the corner here as we go past our fish tanks um, we haven't lost any fish in the last four weeks these tilapia have obviously been the major nutrient source for our plants uh, some of these tilapia are almost ready for harvesting if you have a look they're on that 400 500 gram mark and they're just coming to say good morning to us what a beautiful beautiful specimen all right let's move on to the towers uh, these towers my celery is ready for harvesting my mint is ready to start harvesting uh, here i've got my coriander also ready my strawberries um, we are basically at that point now we're going to cut all of these uh, extra growths off and allow this to now go into fruit and it's going to look absolutely beautiful the spinach while that spinach is being harvested as you can see the leaves just get cut off allowing for new leaves to grow uh, pak choy one of my favorite well that's going to go into one of my asian dishes later um, here we've got the nft system uh, that's part of our trial it's looking really really gorgeous and we're going to go into how does this now compare to the hydroponics so over the last four weeks we've shown you how to take care of both systems we've shown you the types of nutrients that you need to ensure you get good growth good root development we've monitored the ph the ec we've kept a close eye on our temperatures but how has it all now come together well, I'm really excited to, to say that um, overall uh, on the, the aquaponics, we've got a very nice even growth throughout. Only one plant here, which was a bit of a lagger, probably a dud seedling or seed. It does happen. Um, and if you have a look, this lettuce is now ready. As we take out, you can see these roots. One of the things with NFTs, if those roots get too big, it can cause a problem. But we've got beautiful, healthy root structures there good coloration um, and this lettuce is going to go into that salad for lunch I can't wait so if we continue walking around let's go have a look at the hydroponic side so this is our pure hydroponic system as we've mentioned before it's running independent to the aquaponics we have the water reservoir that is supplying the water to all of the plants now the first thing here is you'll notice that my growth is somewhat more sporadic 
Um, some have grown quite well, some haven't. Uh, the major challenge we've had here has definitely been temperature. With a smaller water reservoir um, and we're in summer, we're trying to grow lettuce, it doesn't like those heats. So while some of the other plants and the basil and likes have, have really thrived, what we've noticed is that um, on the hydro side, they just haven't grown nearly as quickly. So here we are just taking that comparison between my aquaponic plant and my hydroponic plant. You can see I do have nice root development, but it's nowhere near as big as my aquaponic side. But what we have seen over the last few weeks on the hydroponics is much better nutrients being uptaken into those plants. As we mentioned, we had to add the iron, we had to add um, magnesium and potassium and calcium into the aquaponic system. It does show the importance of still adding those nutrients uh, into there. So it's not as though my aquaponics is run without any additional core nutrients, but obviously my nitrates and a lot of my micro macronutrients were present. So overall, I think the aquaponics is, is clearly a winner, um, even looking at it from over here. Uh, but I really put that down to two things. I put it down to the temperature on my aquaponics because of that extra water body, because of my bigger fish tanks and reservoirs in the system my temperatures have very, very seldomly gone above 24 or 25. On my hydroponics, I've seen it going up to, uh, up to 30, and that's been a real pain for us because we've had to come in multiple times in the day, put ice in there, change that water, keep that temperature down. And the moment we did that, we saw a much more consistent root growth and growth of that plant. But it really does show the difference between these systems and on the hydroponic side, uh, especially at this size, I think when we do this trial again, we're going to have to have a much bigger water reservoir. We're going to have to increase the volume of water in there uh, because in summer in Joburg, some days get up to 32 and that has a direct translation onto my plant water temperature. And I put down the, the, the difference here down to that. Now we'll run this trial again as we are going more into winter. And what we'll probably find is a more equal growth. But the fact that I am growing iceberg lettuce, these lettuces in the middle of summer on my aquaponic system, it's something that a lot of farmers simply struggle to get right. So it's been a fabulous, entertaining, fun journey for us. And uh, what is really exciting is next week we're going to be running a hydroponic masterclass with Johan van der Bos, South Africa's a uh, top hydroponic commercial farmer. He's going to come join myself and we're going to be running a, 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 a hydroponic masterclass. And I really, really recommend that if you want to learn more about hydroponics in particular, come join us for that. Um, and anyone who subscribes to our channel, we're going to be able to send you a discount code so you can also get some cash off. So make sure you subscribe, uh, put on the notifications for our channel because we have so much more exciting content coming through. In coming up in the next uh, episodes, we're going to start looking more at how do we do seedlings? How do we get the germination right? And what process do we follow? We're also going to be looking at how do we breed catfish? It's one of the most fascinating things to witness and experience. So that's all to look forward to in the next few weeks. But from myself, Justin and Ichthys, thanks for joining us on this journey. Until next time, stay safe.